name of the video is Digital Audio Production. More or less what we're going to look at is more of the consumer side of digital audio. This is the cool stuff that you get to play with as a consumer. Digital audio production is defined as the method used to capture and edit digital audio. And we're going to take a look at three separate tools. We're going to take a look at sound cards, microphones, and audio editing software. We begin by taking a look at a sound card. Now, sound cards in current computers are typically integrated into the motherboard. We've talked about integration motherboards in the hardware lessons. Quick recap, the motherboard, of course, is everything's attached to the motherboard inside the computer. It's mother to all. Integrated means it's built into the motherboard. So for most people, the sound card is built into the motherboard of their computer. They don't really need to give it a second thought. It's not like a video card where people will go and buy a separate video card to improve their computer's video performance. Most people are just fine with the audio card that comes into their computer, the sound card that comes in their computer. Now, this wasn't always the case. In fact, I remember when I went to college at University of South Florida, go Bulls, I had a 386, or it was right before I got my 386, and computers did not come with mice. <laughs> you had to get a card for a mouse, and they didn't come with sound. They came with a PC speaker to beep and tell you it was turned on, but there was no audio output unless you bought an expansion card and popped it in there. Oh, yes, the dark ages of computing. So a sound card is where we deal with our sound. It's going into a sound card. So going into a sound card input, you have the analog signals are going to enter the sound card into what we call an ADC, an analog to digital converter. Remember, we said this multiple times, the computer has to digitize information. It has to work in the digital world. Sound is wave. It's analog. And so the ADC, and there's other parts to this which we're not going to get into, is the computer turning this analog wave into a digital wave. When it leaves the sound card, when it comes out, so for example, you're hearing me right now, this is leaving the computer and it has to go from digital back to analog. So we go through a DSP or a digital to analog chip. If you take a look at the back of your computer, you're also gonna notice that the ports, the openings in the sound card are color coordinated. And green would be your speakers, blue would be your line in, and pink would be your microphone. Speaking of microphones, this is, again, analog into an electrical signal, which would be digital. So it takes my waves, my analog signal, it's going to convert it into a digital signal. Most of today's microphones are one of the following. Either they're going to be a dynamic microphone, which is an electromagnetic induction microphone, or it's going to be a condenser microphone, which is a capacitant ch uh, change. And really, we don't really need to go into too much detail on that as far as this stuff goes. You're going to notice by the price on which kind of microphone that you have to have. And if you do need to make this decision, then you're probably doing audio engineering or video engineering, and in which case you need to do more research on those. So, but for the consumer, for the consumer, here's what you need to know. First of all, almost all laptops now and tablets come with built-in microphones. In fact, uh, my computer here has a built-in microphone and I'm gonna switch our input to that built-in microphone and you can hear the differences on how that sounds. So I'm gonna have to turn off the video, come back, don't, don't go anywhere, it'll seem seamless. Through the magic of video, it will seem seamless to you. As you can tell, the sound quality sounds much different. What you're hearing right now is the built-in speakers or the built-in microphone on my computer. As you can tell, it doesn't sound as good as the other microphone because the other microphone is something different. We'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to kill this one and go back to our other microphone, and you can definitely hear the difference. So what you're hearing now is you're hearing this microphone right here. It's a blue snowball, and you can see, let me make sure I'm in front of it here so you can still hear me. Here is the microphone itself. This little mesh thing is called a pop filter. So when I'm talking into the microphone, for example, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, the peas have a pop to it. You have a burst of air. When I say the same thing behind the air filter, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, it should diffuse the air before it hits the microphone and not causing such an audible hopping noise. Another microphone that I have, unfortunately I lost the cable for it so I can't show you this in action, 
This is a smaller version, again, same company. And this is a really cool, I used to use this when I was doing a lot of traveling because again, the laptop microphones were meh. This is a, another USB microphone. USB microphones are fairly simple. You plug them into a USB port, picks it up automatically, plug and play, good to go. Um, the costs are not that bad. You can really go off into the deep end spending money on different types of microphones. These USB microphones are fairly inexpensive and you get great sound quality, at least I think. Uh, if you don't want to go with USB microphones, if you don't want to go with uh, this kind of a setup, you can use a general other microphones. Go to Radio Shack, um, Best Buy, Staples, anything like that. They have other types of microphones that you can use. You can also get what we call a gaming headset. Gaming headset, you have the earphones and you have a drop-down microphone. I would show you my gaming headset. In fact, I had a very nice gaming headset, but I've also got two young boys and a wife, and so my gaming headset has mysteriously disappeared somewhere in the house. So don't know where that is, so can't show you. Um, but you can get those. Those work for podcasts, those work for online chats, those work for gaming, all that good stuff. And again, I just showed you the USB microphones. Audio editing software. Just like we want to edit our Word documents or PowerPoints and other stuff, we have audio editing software. We can edit things, we can enhance, remove, produce, all good stuff. My picks for these, the top three picks, is Audacity. Audacity is a free, powerful program for audio editing. Again, it's completely free, and you can download a copy and do some massive, major, 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 major editing. Uh, there is a learning curve to it, but it's pretty powerful. Another one is GarageBand. This is for you Apple people out there. GarageBand is pretty cool as far as edit audio editing software. And of course we have Adobe Audition for the serious audio editors out there. The next thing I wanna talk about is digital music players. These are how you play your music. If you recall, not that long ago, we had you know the iPods, you had the different types of iPods, the Shuffle, the Nano, all that good stuff. Now I would say I wouldn't go and buy a mp3 player by itself because we have so many other options for example our phones these play mp3s um they, they play music for example right now okay that's uh congos as we are by the way check out the congos they're amazing band um mp3 player on my phone I don't need a separate MP3 player. I have an MP3 player on my tablet. I have an MP3 player on my computer. I don't need a separate MP3 player. Uh, so you have, if you have a smartphone, you have a digital music player built in. Then we have online music stores. This is how all the cool kids are buying their music. Depending on who you want to go through, you can buy different music from different uh, organizations. So for example, if you want to buy your music from iTunes, you're going through Apple. If you want to go through Amazon's MP3 store, which is actually one of my favorites, I was a big Apple iTunes fan. Then I went to the Amazon music uh, world, and I love it because you can play your MP3s on any device. So, for example, my wife and the kids are on vacation out in West Texas somewhere. They had Amazon streaming music. They could listen to the playlist of all of our music all through their trip. Another really cool thing is that, again, this is not an Amazon commercial, but Amazon Prime has introduced a service as of the recording of this video where you get access to untold amount of music through their Amazon Prime store, which is free. It's part of your Prime membership, and you can listen to all sorts of different things. So definitely worth checking out there. It's kind of a game changer for MP3s. And then we have Google Play, which also provides music. Now, I've never actually used Google Play for my MP3s, I have used iTunes and I have used Amazon. Uh, if you're a Starbucks fan, I believe Starbucks is still doing this. Look around at your local Starbucks when you go. They used to give out free music per day things. This was through you know, Apple iTunes. It was a code that you could redeem for kind of indie music. So I don't know if they still do that, but worth checking out. Streaming music. Now you can listen to music wherever you're at on your computer on your technology this is streaming music it's broadcast of data that's played on your computer and immediately discarded so you can listen to music 
on your computer that you don't own. It's like internet radio. It's pretty cool, except it's better than internet radio. It's more customizable. You have iHeartRadio. This is part of the Clear Channel Networks. Any Clear Channel, they're a humongous company, by the way. If you have a Clear Channel Network near you or a Clear Channel radio station, which I guarantee you do, you can find them online at iHeartRadio. Groove Shark, also another MP3 uh, streaming music place. Django, Pandora, Prime Music, Spotify. I asked my Facebook uh, fans which one they preferred. I had a lot of people go with Pandora. I had a lot of people go with Spotify. These are actually, you're able to customize your radio station. So, for example, when I use iHeartRadio, I can type into iHeartRadio an artist. So, for example, um, I typed in System of a Down. And not only did I get a System of a Down on the playlist, I got everything kind of related to System of a Down. So, that was kind of cool. I discovered some new music that way. So, that's streaming music. Finally, I want to talk about speakers. This is the implementation of stereo and surround sound. You might have heard of a number dot something. So for example, 2.0. 2.0 is stereo. It means you have a left channel and a right channel. 2.1, that dot one is about a subwoofer. That's the bass. Drop the bass. This is the bass and the music. So 2.1 means you have a left channel and a right channel and subwoofers. 5.1, now we're in surround sound. 5.1 means we have five speakers. We have a left, a right, a center, a left surround, and a right surround. And we have the one subwoofer. A 7.1 is like crazy surround. <laughs> it's still surround. Obviously, more speakers, more kind of a, a variation on what you're hearing, more, I guess, true surround sound-ish stuff. Um, you have seven speakers. You have a left, right, center, left surround, right surround, left back, and right back. Okay, in the next video, we're going to take a look at digital imaging.